Hello, my name is Martin Parker. I'm a professor at the uh, University of Bristol in the School of Management and one of the editors of the Organisations and Activism series for Bristol University Press. With me here today, I've got Dr Tom Swan from Loughborough University, who's written our first wonderful book called Anarchist Cybernetics. So Tom, could you just start off by saying a little bit about yourself? Yeah, hi, hi Martin. Um, yes, my name's Thomas Swan. Um, I'm currently a Leverhulme Early Career Fellow at, um, in Politics and International Studies at Loughborough University, soon to be a lecturer in Political Theory at Loughborough. Um, Congratulations, that's brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so my, my, my research um, is broadly situated in um, anarchist political theory. And in the past, I've connected that in different ways to critical management studies and um, at the moment, more in terms of anarchist political economy. Um, and the, the book that I've written draws together some of that, particularly the work in critical management studies, um, mm -hmm. looking at anarchist approaches to organisation in relation to social media in particular. OK, so I mean, one of the things that that people are going to be initially, many people will be initially surprised about is what on earth does anarchism have to do with management? Because for many people, anarchism is a theory of disorganisation, of mess, of, you know, kicking against the pricks. So so, you know, what's what's wrong with that view of anarchism? So I think there's a, there's, there's definitely a caricature in the popular imagination about anarchism. Um, so the the cover of the book, there's the um, Guy Fox mask from the V for Vendetta film, which yeah. became um, quite synonymous with um, certain parts of the sort of anarchist or radical movements around 2011, um, around the like Occupy movement, the Arab Spring, that that, that period. Um, and part of that imagination is, you know, the anarchist is a sort of agent of, of disorder, the, the bomb throwing anarchist. Um, but in actual fact, from its very beginnings, anarchism's always been about order. So it's always been about how do we achieve um, organisation? How do we achieve some form of social order without a hierarchical institution like the state? Um, or, or with like other kinds of hierarchical in, in institutions or, or institutions that dominate people um, and that create a division between the few who are the ones who do the ruling and the many who are the ones who are ruled. So what you're saying is that anarchists aren't against organisation as such, they're against particular forms of organising that they don't like very much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so so one, one way I like to look at it is that um, thinking about different forms of governance as well. So, so anarchists are opposed to government as an institution that is that sits above people and that um, you know, passes down rules upon them that they have to follow but they're not against governance and they're not against organization yeah yeah and of course you know i agree completely it really annoys it it really annoys me the particular caricature of anarchism as if anarchists couldn't organize things themselves you know it's kind of a, a strange idea so so that's anarchism and the other uh, word that people might not be that familiar with in the book is cybernetics so tell us a little bit about cybernetics Yes, so the, the, the cybernetics tradition that I'm most interested in is one kind of going from the end of the Second World War onwards, um, which is particularly interested in how self-organisation operates in systems. Um, and that cuts across you know, biological systems, um, mechanical systems, electrical systems, computer systems, and also social systems, the kind of systems that we use to, to so, live our lives. So cybernetics is a theory of systems, something like that? It's, it's a theory of self-organisation in systems. Um, so, so the kind of basic tenets of it is, are, are that um, the systems are at their best, they're most effective um, and they're most, most capable of adapting to change when they're self-organised. Um, so when the parts organise themselves without the need for some um, external controller and that, that for me is where the sort of connection with anarchism comes from. So if somebody says to you, for example, that the best kind of systems are systems that do have a hierarchical structure and require kind of bosses, leaders, managers of some description, what's what's your response? Um, the, the, the basic response from a sort of cybernetics perspective is that these systems are not, not effective. Um, so basically, if, if something happens in one part of the system, information has to travel all the way up to the top of the system, a decision needs to be made about it, and then that decision needs to be communicated all the way down to the bottom. And that's a very slow process. 
um, and one of the, the cyberneticians who I'm most interested in, Stafford Beer, he talks about this in terms of the sort of lag in terms of decision making here. So when the decisions actually been made and the actions been communicated, the situation's already changed on the ground. So the, what, what the organisation is doing isn't going to be relevant to what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. um, so from a cybernetics perspective, self-organised systems where different parts of the system can make decisions themselves um, in, in coordination with other parts, but still having quite a lot of autonomy, that allows them to make decisions that um, react quickly to changes in, in their environment. Um, from the anarchist perspective, those kind of hierarchical systems are also ineffective. So anarchists do also make that argument about the effectiveness of these of these kind of systems or organisations, but they also make the argument that ethically or politically these systems entail domination. And so, they're, so, so anarchists reject them both in terms of their effectiveness and on the kind of relationships they actually build between people. Because people become dependent on a central authority and no longer take responsibility themselves to be engaged in solving their problems. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that, that that's one of the key sort of consequences of this is people become um, indoctrinated in a sense to to being ruled and being governed, and lose that that ability of of um, autonomy. Um, and interestingly, you know, uh, Proudhon, who was one of the one of the first people to describe himself positively as an anarchist. Um, likened that to murder. So he's saying basically in, in a situation where you're being governed, where you're being ruled by someone else, that's actually killing your soul as, as, as a human being, giving up that autonomy. So he, he likens that to actually some, something quite as serious as murder. OK, so in the book, you talk a bit about the way that the Arab Spring, for example, or the Occupy protests are good examples of your general argument. But let's let's let people read about that in the book and instead talk about a more contemporary example. So, for example, COVID. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about how you might apply an anarchist cybernetics to something like track and trace? Yeah, so I think the, the COVID example is really interesting from a sort of anarchist cybernetics perspective. Um, in, in many ways, some of the responses we've seen to COVID um, sort of line up with what someone like Colin Ward would describe as anarchy in action. Um, so it's so it is, it is actually um, a lot of the responses in communities where people have come together partly spontaneously in many ways. Yeah, um, WhatsApp and, groups and things like that. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So there's been the, the, the technology has been there to allow for this sort of self-organised response in communities. And there's been there's been problems with that. Some have been more hierarchical than others. There's been issues about how those relationships are actually managed. Um, but the really interesting thing is that it does show that some kind of self-organised community response is possible um, without a kind of state type organisation organising it. Mm. Something that track and trace is obviously much more complicated because it's a much bigger scale. So um, the anthropologist James C. Scott. Um, who is, is is not not an anarchist, but does describe a sort of anarchistic view of the state. So two and a half cheers for anarchism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we, where he brings the state back into the picture is to say that something like mass vaccinations, and um, but that's not really possible without the state because of the scale, because it needs to be cover huge populations. Um, the track and trace might fall under that kind of thing that we might think, well, actually, it's such a large operation. It needs to, for it to be effective, needs to be to happen across that mass mass, mass level. Um, but I think these are things that we need to start experimenting with. So thinking about, OK, if, if we've got the technology, because a lot of the track and trace technology is technology that's already available. So we know it exists. We know how it works. Um, how can we make that more autonomous? How can we take that out of the hands of the state? Mm. How can we kind of build and develop technologies like track and trace that operate across a huge scale, mm. um, but that we still have control over? Yeah, that's right. I mean, a recent intervention, uh, last couple of days, I think it was by, uh, um, was it the Archbishop of Canterbury or something, was talking about the idea of localization of track and trace, that that was the only way in which we could effectively make it into a more robust um, safety net, rather than assuming that the state could somehow centrally control all these kinds of things. That's great, Tom. Thank you very much indeed. That's a, a, re a really interesting summary of what I think is a really challenging and excellent book. 
um, and thanks very much for making some time to talk to us about it today. Thank All you. All the best. Thank you.